Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Last week I did a Luminar AI video. I called it Luminar AI Quick Start. And in that video I processed an image of my cat Rocky. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. In that video, I mentioned that I'd be doing another Quick Start video where I'll be processing a portrait. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I, of course, have this image of the young lady. I'm in the edit module of Luminar AI. I'm over here in the essentials tab. And probably the first thing I would do if needed is I would go to light and adjust some like, you know, exposure, contrast, highlight shadows, maybe even white balance, uh, blacks and whites. But in this case, I think the image is exposed perfectly. I don't really need to do anything right here. So I'm not going to. Also, if I found that it needed like a color boost or something like that, I might go to the color uh, tab as well and increase saturation, but probably more likely increase vibrance. Vibrance is usually a better choice uh, when you want to enhance the color of a portrait because vibrance won't enhance or won't increase the saturation of skin tones as much as saturation will. If you go to saturation straight off, you'll tend to give your uh, subject a color, uh, you know, too much color to their skin and like a sunburn. Whereas uh, vibrance doesn't affect the skin quite as much. So that might be a better choice. In this case though, I'm not going to adjust either. I don't really need to. So what I want to do is I want to crop it right off the bat. So I'm going to go to composition AI and I want to crop it into a vertical four by five. So I'm going to go right to the uh, ratio drop down and go to four by five. And then I'm going to click right here to make it a vertical uh, portrait orientation crop. Now I want to just kind of move it over a little bit. And I'd like this top horizontal rule of thirds line to go right across the middle of her eyes. So I'm going to go at the top of the crop box and pull it down. So it's like that. And I think that's it. That's my crop. So to commit to the crop, I'm just going to close down the composition tool. And there it is. So I have it cropped. Now, because I'm not doing any light or color or any adjustments like that, I'm just going to jump right to the portrait. Um, panel and I'm going to go to skin first and I'm going to turn the amount up and just so you could see the effect it does I'm going to turn it all the way up to 100 and I'm also going to click on uh, the checkbox for skin defects removal so any blemishes she might have it will remove them you can see like right there as soon as I turn that on it removes it now this is really a high-end uh, skin softening tool. It doesn't really blur the skin. It's more of a frequency separation type operation. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that uh, the pores of her skin are still intact. So you can see her pores. So it really does a nice job. Now I think I have that a little bit too high though. So I'm gonna pull it down a bit. I see I want it a little more natural. And there is some shine on her face and we'll uh, move the shine removal to the right. And that's kind of a more subtle adjustment, but I'll move that all the way up to the right. So here's a before after of just the skin adjustments. There's before and there's after. So you could see it, it did quite a, quite a nice job. So after skin, I'm gonna go right up to face and I'm gonna add a bit of a face light that just kind of brightens up the face a little bit. I, that usually does a nice job, I like that. Now I'm not going to slim her face, but if I did want to, I could slim her face, but I don't want to do that. Now, uh, this is particularly true uh, with subjects who have darker brown eyes. It's sometimes very difficult to get any detail out of darker brown eyes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the iris tool right here, this drop down, and I'm gonna let her keep her brown eyes. For example, I could change them to blue if I wanted to, or any of those colors listed, but I'm gonna stay with brown. I'm gonna keep her brown eyes, but it just shows detail more in her eyes. And then we have this iris visibility slider, and you can see how when it's down, they're darker, and as I move it to the right, they're brighter. And I still want them relatively dark. I want her to look like her, I just want to make it look like maybe she has some base makeup on, you know, and it's not, I'm not really altering her physical looks. I'm just like a person who might wear a little makeup. That's all. So I, that's the way I want to do it. Now, if I wanted to really alter her looks, obviously I could do that. I could slim her face. I could change the color of her eyes. I could do all that stuff if I wanted to. Now I'm going to add a little lens flare. 
uh, that's just a little brightness under the bottom part of her eyes or at the bottom part of her eyes. See that? There's way high, right? I'm just going to do a little, just like that. Now, uh, typically, I do like to enlarge the eyes a little bit. Uh, sometimes, depending on what focal length lens you're using, the eyes might look a little bit too small, but you can make it kind of look silly. But in her case, uh, I don't think I need to. Her eyes are pretty large already, but, you know, you could just bring them up a little bit. Maybe just like that. Um, whitening the whites of her eyes, you could whiten those. Now, I would recommend that you don't go too heavy on that. It just tends to look un unnatural. Uh, just bring that up a little. Also, I recommend that uh, when you do these adjustments after you're done, walk away from your computer a little while and let your brain disconnect from it and let your eyes rest. Then come back and look at the portrait. And anything that you overdid will stand out then. And then you could pull those sliders back a little bit because you tend to get fatigued looking at the image and you'll tend to overdo things. So, you know, take a step away for you know, 10, 15 minutes, half hour even, then come back and then you'll, those things you overdid will jump out at you. Now eye enhancer, you could see you can make them look like marbles if you move that way to the right. I'm just going to, just very little. Red eye removal, if you had a flash, you were using a flash and you had red eyes, that's what that slider's for. Of course, in this case, she doesn't have red eye problems. Dark circles underneath her eyes, uh, we'll kind of soften those up a little bit. You can see if I move that way to the right, what that does, you can see. All right, hopefully you saw that. Now I'm just gonna move that right about there. Now the improve eyebrows will darken her eyebrows, you can see. Her eyebrows are fine. A lip saturation, just add a little more color to the lips, make the lips a little bit redder. Maybe darken them a little bit. Makes her look like she's living, wearing a bit of lipstick. Oh, teeth whitening. You can see we could brighten up her teeth. And that's real natural looking. So I think that's pretty good. Now we'll uh, do before after the face. Uh, there's just These are just these adjustments, not the skin adjustments. There's before and there's after. Now it's probably a little bit overbaked. Uh, in, you know, this is probably an example where if I step away from my computer, then come back and look at it, I'll say, oh, it's a little bit overdone. Uh, but Here's a total before, after. There's before, and there's after. Before, after. So you can see how powerful these tools are. Um, again, I'm just trying to hopefully uh, make it look like um, she's just wearing some makeup. I don't really want it to alter her actual person, you know, who she is. Uh, body AI, of course, it's really not showing her body. You could kind of um, make their body a little heavier looking or a little lighter looking. And if they're, you know, want to tuck in their belly, you could do that with the abdomen adjustments. Um, I've not used this control yet on a person. Um, don't have really any plans to. That's something I don't normally want to do. But it's there if you need it. Um, high key looks, you know, to give the image kind of a high key look. Something, you know, nothing I want to do on this image. So I think I'm done with the uh, portrait adjustments here. Now what I want to do is I want to zoom in a little bit. And you can see she's got a couple flyaway hairs. Uh, she's got a few, but a couple that are bothering me. This one right here. And there's like a couple right there. Maybe this right here. Maybe this tiny bit over here. I like those. I mean, not that I like them, but I'll leave those there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Essentials panel. We're going to go to the Erase tool. All right. And then we're going to select. We want to select what we want to erase. And you could change the size of the brush with this slider here. Or you could use your bracket keys. The right bracket key makes it larger, left bracket key smaller. Now what I want to do is I want to paint on this hair as carefully as I can. With my mouse is kind of hard. I'm kind of used to my using a Wacom tablet, but I don't have it hooked up to this computer at the moment. So we're just going to have to do the best I can with the mouse. And I'm going to probably assume that most of you don't have a Wacom tablet anyway, so you'll be using a mouse. So you'll be seeing how I could do it. If I could do it, you could do it too. I'll come down here and get this hair there. And there's this hair right here. Kind of get that like that. All right, so I think I got all the ones I at least I want to get. And I'll click on this Erase button right here. And it will take a second. And it will erase those adjustments. And there you go erase those and you can see it did 
uh, fine. There's a little discoloration up in here. Maybe we'll get rid of that. See what that does. Let it do its thing. And that looks better. Um, if there were any blemishes that the previous tools we used in the portrait um, panel, if they're still there, like there's maybe a little bit of discoloration there, maybe like right in there. And this, of course, um, those portrait tools I used previously only work on her face. So there might be maybe a blemish on her neck or her shoulders or something like that. You could use this eraser tool to get rid of those. So I'm going to click erase there. Let those get rid of, takes a second, and there they are, they're gone. So I think we're done with that. We'll close that down. We'll zoom back out and let it render. And that's it. I think I'm pretty much done. You can see like there's a blemish here on her shoulder. So if I wanted to get rid of that, I would open up the erase tool. And then I would probably get a little bit of a bigger brush. I'll use the right bracket key. And we could paint on that. Maybe paint there, there, there. So, you know, little discoloration spots here. You can get rid of those as well if you want, you know. And then click erase. So you get rid of all that stuff. And it should disappear in a second. And it did. So it does a really nice job. They supposedly improved the erase tool for Luminar AI compared to Luminar 4. And the little bit I've been using it, it does seem to work a lot better. Uh, so I kind of like what it's doing. And I would say I'm done uh, with it. So you could see how quickly you could do this. Uh, if I wasn't talking and doing this video, I could have did this in two minutes. So there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So if you're interested in Luminar AI, they have a fully working free trial. I have links to it in the description below this video. If you decide to purchase it, I have a discount code you could use and I'll have that listed in the description below this video as well. And remember, I do have that previous quick start video where I just kind of give you the general lay of the land of Luminar AI and in, along the way I process an image of my cat Rocky. Uh, I'll have that linked below and you can check that out as well. I'd like to thank everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.